Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy, with another special guest on my gratitude podcast interview regarding the pandemic. And my guest today is none other than, none other than PJ Glassy, the very successful entrepreneur and owner of the X Gym, which uh, a lot of people have gotten a tremendous benefit from and taking care of yourself mentally and physically. And just an overall great guy and somebody I look up to and look to a lot for my. Uh, leadership on taking good care of yourself. PJ, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet. You bet. So what I've done is I've just, I've wanted to talk to people and just get some feedback from them and maybe tips and ideas that we can share with other people. So mm -hmm. my first question to you, PJ, is what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? You know, it's kind of funny because people might take this wrong when I first say it, but it's surrender. Mm. And because there's certain things we can control and there's certain things we can't control. And when people hear the word surrender, they think weakness. Mm. But when I, when I talk about surrender, it's about surrendering to God, mm. who is the creator of the universe, the ultimate in strength. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking something that, that I'm feeling helpless about but never hopeless because I'm surrendering to him who has the ultimate strength. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm in a way showing my own weakness and saying, you know, this is beyond me. This is over my head. I can't deal with this. I can't fix it. So you're the director of my life. You direct my steps mm -hmm. and let's just see what happens. Here's, here's the problem. Now this is a lot easier said than done because I'm not very good at, well, I'm getting better at, giving really truly giving it up so that initial surrender makes me feel great and I, I feel lots of peace and great i put it in his hands better in his hands than my hands right mm -hmm. but then 20 minutes later i've probably taken it back already <laughs> and i'm starting to worry about it and getting worked up again and then that's my reminder to go oh wait okay no no, no i give that to you already so sorry i'm, gonna, I'm not i'm just not trying to take it back it's just you know my my weak flesh so here it is again <laughs> <laughs> just, but each time I do that, I get a little bit better at it because it's a skill, you know, that yeah. it's better with practice. But um, when people see me relaxed about this whole thing, even though my business has been shut down along with a lot of the others, although we're, you know, we're doing the online stuff, which is helping. And there could be a lot of stress there. Right. But surrendering that to him gives me strength and confidence and hope. And that's what a lot of people are looking for right now is hope. Yeah. And a lot of people are feeling hopeless. Absolutely. And, and PJ, when you talk about surrender, how does it manifest itself with you as far as, is it a mental message that you get, or is it just a feeling you get to get that direction that kind of helps you as you're uh, surrendering, if you will? Mm -hmm. It is. And it's just reassurance that he can do a lot better with it than I can. Mm -hmm. So if I hold on to it and worry about it and try to fix it, I'm going to mess it up. But if I give it over to him who knows exactly what to do mm -hmm. and ask him to direct my steps and ask him for the wisdom that he can give, that only he can give ultimate wisdom, then I'm safe and I'm good. And yeah. then as long as I could just stay in that mode and just listen and have him direct my steps and follow those steps best I can. I'm not perfect and I mess up and I, I don't a lot, but. Right. The more I try to focus on that, the more I do. And then the more things tend to work out. They always work out better when he's in charge. Excellent. And excellent. Well said. And, and you know, my topic is uh, my belief is gratitude and focusing on what you're grateful for and not what you don't have and so forth. So have you noticed since we've gotten into this, this has been a month or so that we've gone through this. Has what you're grateful for changed much in the last four to five weeks or has it been kind of the same? And what would you say you're most grateful for today? Mm. Gosh, the first thing that comes to my mind is my wife. And mm. uh, I hear so many issues and problems with, you know, people that they're stuck in the quarantine together and they're not getting along and it's getting worse. You know, right. uh, domestic violence is going up, um, yeah. abuse, all those kinds of things and problems. And a friend of mine is a divorce attorney and she's saying, you know, she's getting swamped and all this. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's just really sad. And I just don't, I don't have that. I mean, Beverly is amazing. And, you know, God gave us each other and it was a wonderful gift and we're getting along fine. And, you know, the other thing I'm grateful for is 
that I live in the same building as the gym. So I live on the fifth floor and then I can just come down and run. I'm in the office right now. It was, it was a, a staircase to get here. And so that's super convenient. And so when she's got a whole bunch of meetings and things going on and, you know, the zoom calls and the phone calls and everything. And so do I, I come down here. So yeah, nice. yeah so it's great. Nice. And yeah. there's a couple of really huge things that I'm grateful for right now. Excellent. Those are excellent. And speaking of that, speaking of being in the apartment and coming down to the X gym or whatever, what sort of, you're a very go, go, go. I didn't know Beverly is too. And juggling a lot of balls and things went on. And I, you know, if they say something, what was that line? If you uh, want to get something done, give it to a busy person. So I certainly see myself that way. I see you that way. What are some thoughts or tips or ideas or something that somebody might be doing during this time when they're kind of housebound that might be a good idea? Keep plugging away because once you stop and you sit down and you start to get comfortable mm. is when you start to get lazy. So, you know, lazy always has these really horrible negative connotations like we're intentionally doing it. Right. And we're just a lazy person. But lazy can sneak up. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon before you know it, you have sat down for a break and you've relaxed and you've now you're you've watched CNN for an hour and now you're even more stressed out and you, you plowed through a whole bag of popcorn or chips and you're like, uh Oh, and then, <laughs> and then you didn't get anything done during that whole time. And now you're more upset and you just eating junk food, processed food. So now everything's crashing and now you're going to get less done. And it's just, so just stay away from those initial triggers and temptations to slow down. Now, of course we have to do, we have to slow down. We can't go 100%. Well, Bev can go 100% all day, but normal humans can't go 100% all day. And so if we do, we burn out and we, we rebound and a lot of bad things happen. It's bad for our health, bad for our sleep, bad for a lot of reasons. Right. right. So what I do is when I take a break, I just find what's therapeutic for me. Cooking is very therapeutic for me. So I just go in the kitchen and I start getting creative. And that's great. And that's a great break. Mm -hmm. um, for other people, it's meditation. For, uh, for me, another one is prayer. And mm -hmm. just to take a break. But, you know, getting back to what, what you are about, all about is the gratitude. And that's a wonderful break. And mm -hmm. when I say meditation, all real meditation really is, is just focusing on one thing. Yeah, true. And so if you focus on what you're grateful for on gratitude, that's meditation. Yeah. So you're doing gra a gratitude exercise and meditating at the same time. And a lot of times people, they're so upset, it's hard to get out of that state that they're in. And to get into a gratitude state, all it takes is just saying out, out loud, saying thank you. Yeah, that's true. And then that first time you say it, maybe you don't think there's something to be thankful for and something doesn't come to mind. But the second, third, fourth time, I don't know how many times it'll take for some people in a really crummy state. It might take a dozen times. Right. But there's two brains. There's the conscious, the prefrontal cortex, and then the subconscious, the rest of the brain. And the mm -hmm. conscious, I call our parent brain. And subconscious, the rest of the brain is the toddler brain. Mm -hmm. And the toddler's very emotional. The, the parent can be very rational. So okay. when we are when the parent brain is forcing out the words, thank you, then pretty soon the toddler brain starts pumping out things and thoughts of things that are to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And when I was walking in the hallway this morning, I was doing that. And, and it took about three times. And then I thought, just the floor that I'm walking on, I'm really thankful for. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a really nice floor. And if I didn't have it, it would be dirt. And think of how many people living in countries around the world don't have a floor. So They're true. walking on dirt. Now, for a lot of them, that's okay. A lot of the hunter-gatherer societies, they don't want a floor. Right. But for a lot of other millions of people, they would rather have a floor to walk on. Yeah, definitely. It's such a basic thing. But mm -hmm. once we start saying that word, thank you, thank you, thank you, things pop pop out of that subconscious that toddler brain and then the parent and the toddler are talking and we're getting when then we get in a completely different state a way better state to be in 
Right, exactly, exactly. Excellent point. So a couple more questions. Um, you mentioned that the gym has, of course, gone online right now and doing the best it can, but everybody's been kind of shut down. We know this is going to end at some point, and we don't know when, but we know it's going to end, and there'll be a vaccine, and there'll be different things that will happen, and our world will be different, but a, lot, but a number of things will come back to uh, some level of normalcy, at least part of it, I guess. But what are you doing right now, PJ, to kind of hit the ground running when this thing is over? Because this gives us a chance to really think about a lot of things, whether it's personal or business or whatever, that really sort of have a plan. What do you kind of have in mind that you might be thinking about when this thing does end? Right. So what I want to do more of is um, group meetings. So to where people actually come to the X Gym. And it's either for a seminar or some get together, you know, a recipe party or a support group where mm -hmm. people just sit around and we just talk about stuff because we're not just body training, we're brain training too. Right. Right. But the way I'm, I'm also thinking about the way think the world is going to change after this, because mm -hmm. there will be some things that go back to normal. Right. And there's some things that just will be extinct and shift exactly because this is an interrupt and this is a reset for a lot of things so i'm trying to think ahead you know what things are going to be reset what things are going to be new and how is this going to be a huge step forward with a lot of things and where we get rid of some things and which happens with a lot of interrupts yeah. like tesla mm -hmm. you know now how many other car makers are going to be making all electrics coming exactly. probably next year yeah it's just going to exactly. blow up because they first they waited and they saw it was going to work and then yeah oh god I guess it's working so now we got to get on this bandwagon too so this whole COVID thing is going to cause a lot of those paradigms to shift and right. one of the thing that I'm already seeing is this whole concept of online training now we've been doing it for years so we were the old kids on the block when this happened and it was easy to transition our members to that but more people are going to be doing it even if things do completely get back to normal with you know no more quarantines they they may do rolling quarantines and stuff too so right. we may be coming in and out for a while and in that case you know we're certainly ready we always have been but we're even more now and oh yeah so it's going to be more marketing to our our online training arm so people know how good we are at it how experienced we are and and you know how, how well it can work and then a lot of people are going to be more open to the concept because before this, they were like, no, even our own members, they would go on a trip or vacation and we're like, well, we can train you in the hotel room, hotel gym, anywhere in the world. They go, yeah, I know, but yeah, I don't know. But now they're like, hey, this is kind of cool. And one of these guys that, that was skeptical before this said, I like this so much. I'm going to be doing, a, I'm going to do a hybrid when we come back. I'm going to be doing a lot of them at home, even though the gym is only five minutes away. Right. The convenience is amazing of not having to drive five minutes each way and throw my gym bag in the car and maybe forget my shoes and all the kind of other kinds of things. So people are shifting. And so that's that's one thing we're going to be ready for. Yeah. Excellent. And I was thinking, too, it extends your reach literally worldwide. As long yep. as you've got that computer, that Facebook that, or FaceTime, I should say, or Zoom or whatever it might be. And one thing I noticed that never changes is Jay's intensity doesn't change across yeah. the Zoom as opposed to in person. So I'm still scared of <laughs> And so I thought that translated very nicely. <laughs> like, I better be doing <laughs> right. So but anyway, the, the last, my, la it. my last question is, uh, what is sort of a, a, maybe a quote or a saying or a Bible verse or something that you would say kind of represents your philosophy? If there's sort mm. of overarching PJ feeling about life, I know a number of people have said this too shall pass or, but is there something that kind of is yeah. at the top of the list for you that kind of reflects how you feel about things in general? Yeah. And this falls right into the whole gratitude thing too, because the apostle Paul in Philippians gave us a list of things to think about. Mm -hmm. And this would be another form of meditation. So he said, whatever is true noble right pure lovely admirable excellent praiseworthy think about these things wow so i just get that list and i i have i, I memorized it so i have a, all those words in my brain and i just pick one or i'll cycle through the list 
and I'll just think about things that come to mind when I picture one of those words. Yeah, yeah. And I ended every single time, gratitude comes out of that. Nice, nice. And it reminds me how much I need to stay away from toxic information like the news. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of fake news out there. Even Fox News can be toxic. So I just don't watch any news. Yeah. And a lot of people why? say, oh, why are you, you know, you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff. I go, no, <laughs> I, I love what I'm missing out on. Mm -hmm. If something is important, I'm going to hear about it. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm not a hermit up in the mountains. I'm talking to people every day. So the important stuff I hear about, yeah. all the other stuff I don't have to deal with. Right. And if I run, if, if I'm thinking about the news, I turn on any news channel and I run through that list, that's reason to turn it back off. Yeah. And I think it's a really good point. And I would add to the two also uh, staying away from toxic people. And yeah. you and I have talked about several individuals that have been in your and my life that have not turned out to be the greatest people. And I'm not here to badmouth them or anything else. I just want to stay around people that are positive and that really understand this glass is half full. And I had a friend say something to me once I loved. He said, I've had some great friends that have become acquaintances. And you forget that it goes the other direction. But there's some people that just don't have the right mindset. I don't know why. I don't know where they, how they got it from a kid, being a kid or whatever. But it's just, it's like that one bad apple spoils the whole bunch. The more yeah. You just get lifted up by people. So I've always liked your energy. I was talking about earlier before we went on the, on the podcast about how you're always smiling. And that's just such a cool thing. And it says a lot about you. There's somebody that's reflecting positive energy wherever he goes physically, mentally, emotionally. So it's really cool. So Thanks. listen, listen, my friend, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being on the podcast and uh, we will chat soon. Yeah, my pleasure. Good to see you. Uh, you too. Okay, talk to you soon. Yeah. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.